celebration. Good morning, celebration. Hallelujah. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we do serve. Amen. 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 Uh, we're sorry we're a couple of minutes late, had a little technical difficulty, but uh, that's part of the uh, the battles that you fight on uh, service days. Well, we thank the Lord for what he's doing, and he's in the house. Amen. 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 We just invite each one of you as you uh, log in to please let us know uh, uh, let us know that you're on by just saying hello, sending up a heart, whatever. Amen. And also, uh, please hit your share so that others will know that uh, we're now in service, but it's good to see everyone in the What an awesome, mighty God we do serve. Amen. Good morning, Allison. Hey, Allison. Hey, good. Kira. Hey, Sherry. It's good to see y'all hey, this Tammy. morning. God bless you. Good to see y'all this morning. Hey, Tommy. God bless you. Good to see y'all. God bless you. We're so glad y'all are with us today. Amen. Hey, Gene. Hey, Gene. Libby. Hey, yeah. Sunil. Good to see y'all this beautiful, beautiful morning. Amen. Howdy, Paul and Sue. So happy to see y'all. Lonnie, Lonnie and, and Tammy. Tammy Jessica. Jessica, good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Hey, Iris. Good morning, Iris. We're still praying for your eye. I pray that it's just... Healing so well. Good morning, Christina and Larry, Norm and Mida. So good to see y'all. Calissa, good to see you as well. Yes, Calissa, good to see you too, sweetheart. Hey, Mida, good to see that you got on today. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, good to see y'all. Donna, Donna, God bless, God bless you. you. Good to see you on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. Yes, amen. Please let up. Uh, if you'll Alan hit your and Karen, good to see y'all. Yep. If good you'll just hit your share button, let others know that uh, we're online. and That helps a lot. Looking Sue forward Neal, to what God's to doing you. today. Amen. Hey, Crystal, just got off from, uh, let's see, are you mashing that down? I'm seeing part of your text, Crystal. It says, just got off from work. Wow, we love you, girl. Praying for you this morning. Good morning to you, Antonio Bubba. Blessings on y'all. Blessings, blessings. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be together this morning. It is. Our God's such a mighty God. He's Amen. moving. Man, the weather's getting ready to warm up. Oh, We're yes. getting ready to have some days. What Hallelujah. you think about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I can say that I, I'm allergic to the cold. <laughs> or that's what I always say. I'm just like, whoo, being cold weather. Well, I'll I tell think you what. I think of course, I did grow up in Africa, and you might would think, well, okay, that's what did it. But we lived in a part of Africa that actually wasn't severely hot. It was in the mountains, so it was just moderate. It was very beautiful. But anyhow, it was just enough to... <laughs> well, you grew up in L.A. too, Lower yes, Alabama. Yes, in Lower Alabama. So, yeah, I'm more used to the warm weather. Denise, so good to see you. So good to see Sam. God bless y'all, Joshua. So good to see you doing from your knee surgery we've been good christina good to see you this morning chris Amen. god bless you chris good to see you hey jerry good Angel to see you and the boys so how was your trip to tennessee getting to see your son i pray you had a blessed blessed trip getting to see him amen 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 it's so good to be with everyone this morning. Our Amen. God's such a mighty God. He's so faithful. Yes. Um, I know he's been speaking to everybody, and we're excited about what the Lord has in store for us today. Amen. He's just, I tell you what, every day I wake up and I just stand amazed when I think of the Lord Amen. and all that he's done for uh, myself and my life, for our family, Amen. for all of us at Celebration. He's just an awesome and a mighty God. Yes. Amen. I got a text a few moments ago from uh, uh, from Cynthia. And yes, Cynthia, Cynthia, we love your testimony this morning. Hey Amen. Glory was, to God. She was testifying. She said, oh, thank y'all. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Amen. She was just, just thanking the Lord for, it says, praise report. Up and running. Hallelujah. 
I even got the old computer back online. The Lord loves us and He yes. cares about our stuff. Yes. My 41 year old dryer is still working. Hallelujah. Thank you for praying yesterday. Just think of what He is going to do for our families and our nation. Amen, amen, Cynthia. Amen, that Cynthia. Is a beautiful Hallelujah. What an Hallelujah. awesome praise report. That is our God. He does. He cares about us and He cares about our stuff. He Amen. 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 Brenda, good to see you. Brenda V, good to Harvey, see you this good morning. Good to see you this hey, morning. Hey, Harvey. Okay, not much pain at all. Praise God, Kim. Praise God. We're just going to keep praying for you that you're just going to heal up so well. And I thank the Lord for that praise report that you're Amen. not going through much pain. Oh, that's wonderful. Deidre, hey, Sarai, Deidre, David. Sarai, David. Good to see so y'all as well. Good to see y'all. Hallelujah. So good to see y'all. Hey, Pam, good to see Pam, you this good morning. To see God, you. Bless God bless you. you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, welcome to Celebration. We're just so glad that you're here with us today for this online service. This is my honey, Pastor Rocky, and I'm Pastor Vanjie, and we just are so delighted that you're here with us at Celebration Family Worship Center Amen. right here in Morganton, North Carolina, the beautiful foothills of Morgan of, of North Carolina. Right is right where Morganton is, and just a beautiful family of the Lord. Good morning, Doyle and Sandy. Hey, Doyle. So hey, Sandy. Good to, good to see you. Good morning, Walt Norma. Walt Norma. And we're just so glad that you're here with us today. We just are delighted at all the wonderful reports that we've been hearing this week. Amen. God is answering prayers. He's answering prayer. I'm Amen. telling you, he's answering prayers. So we're just so delighted at the good reports that we're hearing of how numbers are going down. Amen. And it's just, it just, it's just giving a lot yes. of hope, isn't yes, it? And it just has. is very hopeful as we're just moving forward Amen. and know that it just, it's just got that that light at the end of yeah, the tunnel where you're like, does. thank you, Jesus. So we you, knew you know, that we've, we've you were praying. hearing our prayers. We've and been that, praying and asking God to just start wiping things amen. out. Amen. I loved the and, way uh, one article put doing. it this week said the COVID numbers are dropping like a rock. So that's it was just right. like dropping like a rock. And amen. I was like, uh, praise you, Jesus. Amen. We, we thank you for doing that. So, Lord. you know, we're thank hoping you. we're hoping that uh, things continue in this vein. Yes. And that real yes. soon we're going to be back together. Amen. So uh, we're, uh, but until that takes place, just, uh, we're just going to. Get gonna, us closer. I just that's love right. it. That's right. We're getting closer every day. We're just day. so excited. And we're ex we are delighted. Uh, here on our online service. We welcome you and invite you also to be a part of our Facebook page here at Celebration. We have classes that are offered throughout the week. Uh, two of the classes will be offered this afternoon, and that's for the children. There's Children's, uh, children's Church and Children's Sunday School that's offered every Sunday afternoon. And please tune in to those services prepared by Sandy and by Sherry. And send them to families you know that have children just as a... Just say, this is something that our church is preparing for children, and we just Amen. hope it blows Send it out in that way as well. But share those videos throughout the week. There are other videos offered for women's ministry, men's ministry, mm -hmm. adult Sunday school classes, discipleship classes, health classes, emotional, and Amen. just every part of our health. Libby yes. offers those classes. And our youth, they meet. And so... There's just a lot offered on the Facebook page for you to be a part of during this time. And uh, we thank you for that. We also uh, love that we are able to continue just honoring the Lord in the covenant of tithes and offerings. We do yes. that online right now in large part uh, with our Easy Tithe app. That's one way that we're right. able to do it, a safe and secure site that's right there on our Facebook page that you're able to give through. And then others prefer to mail it in to Celebration Family Worship Center at P.O. Box 2058, Morganton, North Carolina, 286. Eight, zero. We're glad to be together this morning. We know the Lord has wonderful things in store and just want to open with some scripture, want to open with some prayer and get into worship. Hope you've got some space where you can just worship the Lord. Amen. We pull uh, we pull promises uh, from the promise box each week and Thank you, Lord. looking at things the Lord's speaking and the Lord promises us, he says, you know, in Galatians 6, 9, let us not be weary in our well-doing, because Lord. in due season we'll reap a harvest oh, if we yes. faint not. 
And yes. then in Matthew 5 and 18, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall not in no wise pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made. We thank you for our time together. And sisters, you, that we we're all able to be gathered together in your Lord. name. And Father, yes. we pray the blessings of the Lord on their households. Father, in this service today, Lord Jesus, you said if you be lifted up, you'll draw all men, women, and children unto yourself. Amen. We're believing for this great outpouring in our nation and in this world. And Father, may, let it begin right here online today, Lord. Hallelujah. Right here in these United States of America. And Lord Jesus, right in this service, pour out your Holy Ghost yes. in every household. Yes. Father, I ask that you would, uh, Holy Spirit, move by the power of the Holy Ghost. We pray people will be saved. Hallelujah. We pray pe bodies will be healed. Yokes will be lifted and burdens will be removed. But Lord, above everything, we want you, Lord Jesus, exalted and glorified. And we give you all the praise, all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. I know Brenda and Christina have their shofars out. We're going to get this shofar that Brian has sent.
Son, Bud, to we your throne of grace, to Lord. You, Lord God. We thank you that he's your as child. You would touch and Father, him, we thank you as we him. stand upon your Pain promises. Pain's got to be gone. Right gone. Crown of his head to the soles, soles of his feet. Prosper. prosper. And every tongue that would try to rise up against Bud. It is condemned because he is of the heritage yes, of the he Lord. Is. In the name and we of thank Jesus. you right now. Pain be gone, gone in the in name Jesus of Jesus. Name. We speak to that back. Tell yes. it to be whole. Yes. Muscles be loosed. Yes. Be free to move. Amen. In the, name, in of the Jesus. name of Jesus. He is the healed of the Lord. And we stand upon your promises. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, Derek. Hey, Monica. Good to hey, see Derek, you Hey, Derek. Hey, Monica. God bless y'all. God bless you.
Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We go deep. Jesus in the streets. 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, your name is power, your name is healing. you're here in the midst of us your word declares that where two or three are gathered Mm. in your name you're there in the midst Lord God and I thank you Jesus that your presence is felt in a very powerful way today above all Lord God your beautiful presence the power of your presence and your love in our midst and we give you glory we give you honor for it in Jesus', in Jesus name. mighty name. Amen, amen. 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 Well, it's so good to be with y'all today. My beautiful, beautiful celebration. And just want to again take the time to welcome anybody that it's your first time to be with us here at Celebration. We're so glad that you've joined us today for this online service. And we just know that the Lord and pray for Him just to bless you immensely. Yes, absolutely. Now, if it is your first time to be with us today, uh, I've been sharing some exhortations in the past few weeks on love. And I've been going to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And this is the chapter in the Bible that just declares... uh, so much about the love of God and it's talking about agape love and that love is the love that God has for man and that man has for God that is the specific type of love that it is talking about and the Apostle Paul he actually shares ten different characteristics of this divine agape love right there in that chapter (coughs) which include and we've covered many of these patience and kindness Mm -hmm. no envy or jealousy humility no self-promoting no rudeness no manipulating or by using shame no um, becoming easily offended celebrating honesty and truth not focusing on what is flawed but rather loyal to the end And then at the end of that chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, he sums up this love chapter with the three words found there in verse 13. And he says, three things shall remain, faith, hope, and love. 
and yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. Now, Wednesday night, we started looking at why did everything get summed up with those three words, faith, hope, and love, and love being spoken of as the greatest of the three. And basically, you can look at it as like it's, he puts it as the cherry on top, yep. so to speak. <laughs> and a there's word. a powerful reason that this agape love got such a distinguished place in this whole chapter. You see, faith and hope, as we talked about on Wednesday night, they are very, very valuable gifts. They are very necessary gifts to our life here on earth, but they are temporary gifts. And what do I mean by that? They are gifts that we're only going to use here on earth. When you get to heaven, are you going to need faith? Are you going to be like, oh, I need to pray and get saved? No, you're nope. already saved. Are you going to be like, oh, I hope for this, I hope for that? No, you won't need that gift anymore. It's You're going to be in the eternal uh, residence of heaven. Amen. And so these gifts are temporary. They're for right here and right now. But it's kind of wild whenever you think about it that way because these are gifts that we're very dependent on here on earth. And absolutely, these are gifts that we do dependent on that need to be operating in our lives as we are on this earth right here and yes. now. But it's love that is the eternal gift. And that is why it is highlighted as the greatest of all. That you can have all kinds of beautiful gifts from God. But it's love that we should be seeking out the most because it is the gift that is eternal and it causes things to flow and to function in our lives in the way that God intended. Now, I dearly love the way that the Holy Spirit communicated this and impressed this analogy upon me that I've been sharing with y'all. When he said, my love flows in the life of my children as a nourishment for their spiritual mm. circulatory system in the same way that the heart pumps blood for the physical circulatory system. Yes. You see that heart, it is pumping blood, it's going through those arteries and veins, it's reaching all of our vital organs and it's not only taking the blood too, it takes blood away, it takes the good things that we need, but then right. it also is part of, in that process, takes away things that we, don't, we don't need. need. So. It's that love that keeps things flowing in the way that the heart, that nourishment. Yes. And so this is the eternal gift that's so vital in our lives. And on Wednesday night, we started taking a little time to look at those other two gifts that were specifically men mentioned there. And specifically, we looked at faith because it said faith, hope, and then it said love. And we saw that the word faith in Hebrew is, from, is the word imuna. And it literally means we wanted to see, okay, well, when his love is flowing in my life and it activates the faith in my life, what is it doing? According to the definition of faith in the Hebrew, it is saying that it causes us to be steadfast. It causes us to be established, stable, and steady. And those are things we need in our life. Yes, absolutely. So absolutely, whenever I'm sharing this, I am in no way knocking faith and hope. We must have those things. Those are four very important things that faith brings to our life. And again, as his love flows, it activates that faith, and we definitely <coughs> want that happening. And I shared much more on faith on the Wednesday night service, and I would just encourage you to go back to that service if you're wanting to hear more of details on that. But I want to move forward this morning and look at that second gift. That second word, again, an essential gift that we need while we live here <coughs> on this earth. And it's the word hope. And so as we move forward this morning, I've, uh, the, I've entitled this exhortation, His Hope Versus the World's Wishing. Come on. His Hope Versus the World's Wishing. And I'd like for you to go with me this morning to Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. Okay, And this is what it says, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what he promised, he confirmed it with an oath. Mm. God did this so that by two 
unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to Come lie. On. Come on. We who have fled to take hold of hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Yes. We have this hope as an anchor. Yes. For the soul, firm and secure. Father God, I thank mm. you for your hope <clears throat> this morning. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful sure. gift sure. that you have given us and that it is ours to have. Yes. I thank you for what it means to our life. And I thank you, Lord God, that you gave it in a way yes. that it's impossible that's for right. it to be taken away from us if we will but lay hold of it. Amen, Lord. Because by your promise and by the oath of your own word, yes. you said it's ours. It's ours, And I Lord. thank you, Jesus, that today mm -hmm. you instill a new hope in us. Yes. You instill a new revelation in us yes. concerning your hope in our lives and what it means. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to say with me this morning, I need hope. I need hope. I've got hope. I got hope. I'm going to walk in hope. I'm going to walk in hope. I need hope. I need hope. I've got hope. I've got hope. I'm going to walk in hope. I'm going to walk in hope. Now this hope, it's a great gift that God's given us. Yes, in fact, it is. all the promises of God in the Bible, they actually inspire hope inside of us. It's what helps us look at the situations in our life, no matter how difficult they are, and it helps us to be able to believe God's going to come through for me, yes. even in this situation. And you know, it's this gift of hope that takes a big bashing in our life. Come on. Come on. It takes a big bashing in our life, especially when challenges become overwhelming. And it's the gift that the enemy... He dearly likes to come in on, and if he can at all, he even likes to replace our hope with defeat and yes. despair. The enemy cannot bear for hope to be operating in our lives. He does not want that precious gift that is promised to us to be operating, but we cannot receive the, in the thoughts of the enemy concerning this hope in our yes. lives. And we're going to find out this morning, not only do we need hope, it's our God-given right. Yes, it is. It is our God-given right to have this hope because it causes us to walk in victory that literally flows from hope. And it's a victory that's produced in our lives that's part of that healthy spiritual circulatory yes. system as His love nourishes these gifts inside of us. So first of all, I just want to answer the question, what is hope? Well, according to the Webster Dictionary, it's something good accompanied with an expectation of obtaining it. It's a belief that it's obtainable. It's an expectation of something that is thought to be desirable, confidence, pleasing expectancy. And that sounds pretty good. But that's not the definition I want to look at this morning. I want to look at hope through the biblical lens and the biblical definition, which takes hope a whole step further. Hope spoken of in the Bible is defined as this. An expectation with certainty that God will do what he said. Come on, yes. An expectation with certainty that God will do what he said. Yes, now amen. that, that's a whole new level of hope. And that's the <coughs> reason why I entitled the exhortation this morning, His Hope Versus the World's Wishing. You see, one definition, it equates hope as something being wished for. Oh, I wish that could happen. Yeah, that I wish. And so it leaves the strength being dependent on man. Right. But not the hope of God. No. The hope of God comes with a certainty. That's right. The hope of God comes with a guarantee. Yes. And the hope of God relies on the strength of God. It does mm -hmm. not rely on the strength and the resources of man That's for right. that hope to be fulfilled. This Bible hope that I'm talking about this morning, it's confident expectation of what God has promised. Yes. It's His strength and it's His faithfulness that fulfills. Mm -hmm. It literally fulfills what is spoken. He is the certainty and He <clears throat> is the guarantee of our hope this morning.
Amen. So remember over in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, it said those three things, faith, hope, and love. And then over in <coughs> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, we see in the first, ver first words that it says these words. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2. Now, faith is the confidence of what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. Come on. Once again, the reason I have specifically brought up that verse is once again, we see faith and hope linked together. Amen. And that is not accidental, just like we've seen over in 1 Corinthians 13. They are linked together to highlight the fact that we're not going to have hope unless we have faith, and we're not going to have faith unless we have hope. These two temporary gifts that are very essential to our lives on earth and are desperately needed as we're here on this earth, they are joined together. Yes. You don't have just faith. And you don't have just hope. That's right. They work together. The Lord intended for them to work together. And they are supposed to work together. And they are attached to make a difference in our life. Mm. But what are they attached to? What is the object that they are attached to? Or better yet, and more correctly worded, who? Who oh, are on. they worded to? Yes. Faith and hope, they are attached to love. And who is love? God, God Almighty. Is love. He is love. He is the factor that our that takes our hope from simply being, you know, this worldly wishful thinking right. into a realm of certainty and a realm of guarantee. It's the hope that He wants operating in your life Amen. and in my life. I want that. Do you want it? I, can, I know that I, I can say it. If you want to share a hand emoji or a heart emoji, or if you just want to raise your hand, if that's you, say amen, but that amen. is me. I want that in my life. And I've got good, good news for us this morning. We can have this hope as a child of God. Mm -hmm. You can have it and I can have it. It is our gift. It is our God-given right to have it. And why do I say that? Because of what the girl, God, what God's Word tells us in His very opening scripture here in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. We have, we have, we have, we have this certain hope. Come on. Like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls yes. to God Himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat. Come on. Which sits in the heavenly realm before beyond the sacred threshold of where Jesus, our forerunner, has gone on and before us, and he is now and forever our royal priest like Melchizedek. Ooh, in the order of Melchizedek. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the reason that this hope can be certain and it's guaranteed in our life is because of who it's anchored to. Come on. Who it is anchored to. You see, this nautical <coughs> theme is sharing with us that the word hope is connected to the word anchor. And the word anchor in Greek is akura. And in the right. Hebrew, it is tikva. So you've got akura in Greek, which is saying the anchor. And then in Hebrew, when you look for the word hope, it's tikva. And in the Hebrew, it means a cord or a rope. Right. And I want you to know that that rope, it's an integral part of an anchor. You just visualize it this morning. You've got to see that rope, and then you see the anchor. And it's a thick rope. And at the bottom of it is the anchor. And I don't know about you this morning, but I'm seeing an enormous rope of hope. Yes. It's that anchor in the heavenlies with the mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ. I might be in this world, but my anchor is not of this world. My anchor yes. and my hope, it is in heaven. And Amen. it's anchored in the realms of the heavenly. It is fastened yes. to the mercy seat, which is right Hallelujah. here in the heavenly realm. And you say, now, Pastor Vanjie, you're talking about anchors. Anchors go down. Well, I know that I love the way my husband always says. In the spiritual realm, God doesn't operate according to how things are in this natural realm. Our ankles go up. Our anchors are upward. They Come are on. heavenward. We yes. are anchored in the heavenlies. <laughs> Our anchor of hope, Ooh. it is fastened right there to the mercy seat. Because the Lord Jesus, Come our on. forerunner, he got up there and he has set that anchor for us. And it is he is the source of 
our hope. Yes. And he is keeping us connected. He is keeping us secure. Because Amen. this isn't our true home. No. But we don't have to get float off of this earth. That's right. We are anchored Come on. because of our hope. That is right there in heaven. And yeah, we might be living down here on this earth and things are moving here, there, and everywhere. To here, yeah, there, and gone. Passing. Going in every which direction. But we've got an anchor. Yes, we And when do. you know that anchor, when you know that anchor, God provided it for me. God has given me an anchor. And when you see that uh -huh. you are attached to that anchor and you don't have to be blown to and fro, you say, I'm going to hold on to that That's anchor. Right. I'm going to have that gift that God's given me. I'm going to take time. Where do you see it? Now, when do you know your anchor's working the best? Your anchor's working the best when you can't see it. Come on. When you look on a ship and you see that anchor at the back, it's not doing one single thing except sitting there. But when you don't see that anchor, that's when it's working the best. And that is when we get more anchored in the Lord. When mm -hmm. we get in that secret place and we anchor ourselves with Come the on, Lord, yeah. that upward heavenly yes. anchor that anchors yeah. us and doesn't cause us to be blown by every wind that comes out Come of on. every part of this world. And we say, I'm safe and secure yes. because of my hope. Not everything happening around me, not everything blowing around me, but because I'm secure because I'm of secure this hope that God has given me. I hope this morning you're seeing that this hope of God in your life, in my life, it's powerful. Yes. It's a powerful gift. It's a purposeful gift. This hope rope. Come on. I hope you see it this morning. It's not some dinky, flimsy, no. oh God, it's tearing. I don't believe it's going to no. hold me kind of rope. No, sir, re. It is a rope that the Lord Jesus, our forerunner, has set safely and yes. securely in that inner sanctuary behind the curtain in the mercy seat. Yes. Right up there in heaven. And I want you to be confident about this anchor that you have this morning. This hope, it is not a hope of this world. It is it's a not. hope that takes us and sees us right into the mighty presence of God. Amen. No matter what state we find ourselves in, because I want to tell you what, the enemy will come against this hope with he discouragement. He'll, he'll he will come against it with discouragement. Yeah. He'll say, what hope are you talking about? Come on. He's a liar. Don't you the listen to that one. enemy. He's a liar. He'll come against you with disillusionment and say, what hope do you think you're hanging on to? I'm telling you right now, we know the hope of which yes, we're hanging we on to. We know where our hope is anchored <coughs> to. And his hope lifts us right up into his presence. And Come we're on. going to stay completely connected to this anchor of hope because of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's our forerunner. The scripture li literally says he came to make a way for us to have this hope. Because you see this world, this the hope we're talking about this morning, it's not the world's wishful thinking. No it's, not. no, it's a hope that's invaluable in our spiritual Amen. lives. We're not called to be down here wavering around in wishful thinking and in wishes. No, we're down here secured in the hope held by our forerunner, the Lord Jesus Christ, given to us by an oath. Come on. Yes. An oath from God. That's right. That goes beyond any oath, Amen. any oath that could ever ever be given because it is certain and guaranteed. And you say, well, now what makes it so certain and guaranteed? Right here in the Word of God in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, it is certain and it is guaranteed because it says, it is impossible, impossible for God to lie. That's right. He is the one who said, I'm giving you this hope this morning, celebration. Amen. I am dispensing my hope to you, celebration. Yes. And it is impossible for me to lie. Never, I will never lie. Never, ever, ever. My hope is sure and steadfast because my promises and my oath yes. are sure and steadfast. God can never lie. Jesus is our forerunner. And he has made the way for us to have and walk in this hope. Yes, amen. And it's his intention and it's his plan that we walk in the fullness. Yes. Fullness of his hope. The word forerunner, when you look at that in the ancient Greek, it's the word prodomus. And it's a military term. So let's look at Jesus here. He is our hope. And in the Greek, here it is. It's this military term of a reconnaissance man who goes forward knowing others are going to be coming behind him. That's right. Is that not what Jesus did for us? Amen. He made the way for us because he said, they're coming behind me. I'm clearing the path and I'm making the way for them because I'm going to have after 
after runners yes. behind me. Yes. Jesus is the forerunner. We're the after runners Come coming on. right behind him as we are in pursuit of this hope that yes, he has given amen. us. In fact, there are no forerunners if you don't have after runners. What's the use to run and clear the way if you're not making a way for those that are coming after you? And Jesus loves us so much that he said, I'm yes, the forerunner to make the path for this hope that my children then can step into this and know that I have provided a hope for them. Amen. He is the pattern. He literally has <clears throat> gone before us as the pattern. You know, the priest in the Old Testament, they didn't enter the veil as forerunners. They no. were only representatives. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, he entered into the immediate presence of God the Father so that his people can follow yes. him there. Amen. He's made a way for us to get That's to that right. mercy seat. And so this faith that we've been talking about, faith on one side, it's keeping us steadfast, it's keeping us established, it's keeping us stable, and it's keeping us steady. Then you join that together with this mm -hmm. hope, this anchor that is anchored right there in yes. the heavenly realm at the mercy seat. This upward anchor of heaven, not down in the ground, but anchored to what is firm and secure. Amen. When you see then these two gifts joined together, as love is flowing, and keeping them operating in the way that the Lord intended for them to operate in your life and my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's something to be excited about. Yes. It's something to be happy about. God has plans to move us in this hope. Yes, His does. hope has great purpose that it keeps us calm when the seas are rough. It keeps our lives held firm so that we won't be wrecked. It keeps us stabilized and able to even comfort others. Yes. You see, that's what sets you apart. We're all in the same storm, but your life to Hallelujah. other people is like, well, why aren't they getting rocked and... Like, what's the difference? What's going on? You're able to tell them, I've got an anchor, an anchor and I am, I am firm and secure because of this anchor that is holding me. And so the question that God is asking us this morning is celebration. Where is your hope? Yes. Where is your hope? Maybe you feel like you've let go of the rope. You've let go of that anchor and the Lord is calling you and he's saying, don't let go. Come on. Don't let go. I've got you. I have got you. You have said that you let go because the storms of life have been too rough. And the Lord would say, that's when you need my anchor the most. I'm going to see you through. Don't let go. Don't let go. I am. Amen. Don't let go of hope this morning. Hang on to it. Come on. And then for those that have been serving the Lord. And they just have been going through severe trials. And so you just feel you've been tested in this area. And you just need a supernatural infusion of the hope of God. We want to pray for you this morning as well. You are not dependent <coughs> on the world's wishful thinking. You have a hope. That is solid. It is yes. secure because God cannot lie. We want to minister Amen. to your hearts. Jesus, our forerunner, has made a way for us to have this hope today. Yes, amen. And I want you to have this hope. I want all of us to be strengthened in this hope as the love of God flows in our life and it keeps our faith and our hope secure yes. in Him, yes. knowing there's nothing too difficult for Him. That's right. But if you don't know the Lord the morning, this morning, and you're like, or you've walked away from mm. the Lord. Maybe you've known the Lord, and you have walked away. Things have choked you out. The Lord is saying, don't let go. Don't let go of this upward anchor I have for you. Yes. I want to attach myself to you as you pray and ask Jesus into your heart. That's what's going to descend to you. This hope anchor. And I'm here Come to on. tell you what, it is a hope anchor that's got you anchored right into the heavenlies. It doesn't matter what happens on this right. earth. This is not our final home. No, it's we not. are passing through doing the assignments that's God right. has for us while we're here. But you need to be anchored to what is solid and is truth. And we want to pray with Amen. you to receive Jesus this morning if yes. you don't know him. 
And if that's you, say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I desire this anchor. I desire this anchor. That you that has been spoken of this morning. That's been spoken of this morning. I'm recognizing today. I'm recognizing today. That you are my anchor. That you are my anchor. I'm asking you, Jesus, into my heart. I'm asking you, Jesus, into my heart. Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Turn my life around. Turn my life around. May my anchor be connected to you. May my anchor be connected to you. As I serve you the rest of my life. As I serve you the rest of my life. And I thank you for it, Jesus. And I thank you for it, Jesus. And for those this morning that just, the storms have just had you tossed. There's been a lot going on. And you just say, mm -hmm. listen, you know, the word of God talks about that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yes. And maybe you are going through some of that today. It is not that you have lost your salvation. It is not anything like that at all. You just have been through storms in life and it's just been a bit of battering and you've just lost sight. Hey, but it, but I'm okay because I am still anchored to mm. the Lord this morning. I pray in the name <laughs> of Jesus. Yes. A supernatural infusion mm. of the hope of the Lord. Yes. The hope of the Lord that is the gift of God. Yes, Lord. Put into our lives for yes. that sister this morning, for that brother this morning that just feels like they've about gone through all they can go through. God, they're crying out saying, God, what else can happen? Father, I'm asking you today to yes. secure them in a way that they know yes. the story ain't over. That's right. It ain't over. It ain't nearly over. That's right. And that you have great things in store for them. And you have great answers for prayers that they've lifted up. Yes. And their anchor is secure according to your word right here in Romans chapter 15, mm. verse 13. I want yes. you to write this down if you're the one that's been struggling. This is God's word to you. Chapter 15, verse 13. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing Amen. With uncontained and perfect peace as you may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with his supernatural abundance mm. until you radiate, radiate, until you radiate with hope. Come on. That's, Come on. that's the Lord's word to you today. Hallelujah. I want you to write it down. Get that particular scripture up on your a mirror on your refrigerator. Mm. Keep that word right there before you as the Lord, even this week, you're going to see your hope increasing. Amen. Amen. You're going to see it increasing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word Hallelujah. From the Lord. Hallelujah. The hope of the Lord. The hope of the Lord. The hope of the Lord. And that's where we're supposed to live. We're supposed to live in God's hope. Yes. We're supposed to live that life tethered to Him. Yes. Anchored to Him. Yes. And um, that, that rope of God. Uh, it's amazing what God's doing in uh, in all of our hearts and all of our lives. Yes. And I want to share with you a couple of things today. Um, uh, as I, my wife and I shared a few moments ago as we were in the beginning of service, we were talking about how we've been seeing the... Uh, the numbers drop in our community across the nation of COVID-19. Uh, uh, COVID yeah. And um, uh, we've actually read articles uh, that have talked about the T cells just in people that are uh, yes, in families, immunity how immunity is growing in families and people uh, that prayers haven't had COVID. Uh, yeah, God's answering prayers. prayers He's doing mighty things. Answered. And um, we're looking at being back together sooner yes. rather than like later. Said, Hallelujah. Like the uh, the light is at yeah, the, end, the, of the, at the end of the it's tunnel. Like, we're thank seeing you, Father, the light, God. and God's going to be bringing us back together, and we're excited about that. Amen. And we're going to let Him continue doing His good work in us. Amen. Uh, the Lord wanted me to share some things with you this morning, and one of the things that uh, the Lord's wanting us to take a look at, and the title of this message is actually being a living memorial. Amen. Being a living memorial. I want you to turn to John fourteen. Uh, John chapter number 14. And in John 14, Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he's telling his disciples, you know, he's got to go away. But uh, he's going to have one. He's going to send one, the paraclete, the counselor, the comforter. 
and uh, he's going to be with them. And it says here in verse uh, chapter 14, and um, it says in verse number uh, 25, I have told you these things, I'm reading from the Amplified, while I'm still with you. But the counselor, the comforter, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of uh, bringing to your remembrance everything I have spoken to you, everything Amen. I have told you. Amen. And the Lord's wanting us Amen. to remember what he has told us. Amen. God's wanting us to remember what he has shown us, what he has spoken to us. My wife, uh, in what she's been sharing on the love of God, actually she's talking about that covenant Amen. relationship with God. Yeah. God made covenant, we know, with Abraham. He told Abraham, he said, you're going to be a father of many nations. Well, he's speaking to Abram, but he said, you're going to be a father of many nations. Yes. And the world's going to be blessed by you. Your numbers will be greater than the stars in the sky and the sands on the earth uh, by the sea. Amen. God was speaking to Abraham, giving him a promise. And Abraham remembered what God said. Yes. Abraham started calling himself Abraham father. Yes. He started calling his wife mother, started calling her princess. He started speaking life yes. to their inner beings because we know his loins were dry. We know that her womb was barren and life came back to their mortal bodies for he was remembering and speaking what God had told them. We know the promises that he gave were to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the descendants beyond them. And that's you and me. Amen. We've been grafted into the vine. But we want you to understand, and uh, as we're walking forward, what God is doing on this earth, and I've been sharing this with you for many years now. God is showing himself strong. God is showing himself reaching the lost of this world and we're at the brink yes. we're at the very breakthrough point yes. of this yes. outpouring of god that's going to take place yes. now i want to share some things with you today that we the body of christ we have to be prepared with we have to be equipped with these things turn with me to the book of of exodus right now in the book of exodus chapter number three hallelujah Amen. <laughs> We know that Moses went up on the mountain of God. He saw a burning bush. He went up on the mountain of God, and he was meeting with God, and God was speaking to him. And in verse, uh, we know that God was telling him, you're going back to Egypt, and you're going to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Amen. And you're going to lead my people out of captivity. And Brothers and sisters, I want you to know the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. Every human being that lives on this planet had at one point in time God's breath living in them. And when we chose to sin, we separated ourselves from God's breath. We separated ourselves from God living inside of us. And we must understand that God is bringing back captivity to himself. Yes. And in this day and age that we're living in, with 7.7, .7, almost 7.8 billion people on the face of this earth, God is reaching back and reaching out to a world that has broken relationship with him. He's reaching out to children that have run away from home. And he's reaching out through you and me to share his love and his mercy and grace with this world that's separated from him. But look here in the scriptures, because remembering the remembrance is a key part of a memorial. Yeah. The remembrance. God said to him in verse number 12 of chapter 3 of Exodus, God said, I will surely be with you. God says yes. to you today, I will surely be with you. Yes, yes. 
And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall serve God on the mountain on Oreb, Horeb or Sinai. We know that we don't live in the Middle East. We know that they don't go to Horeb or Sinai right now. They go uh, to Jerusalem. Yeah. They go to the mountain of God, the place where, where uh, Joseph, he wrestled with God. Yeah. They go and they worship there. That's where they live. That is the holy place of God, his presence. That's where the heaven was open. It's all angels descending and ascending to the very throne room of God. And he says, And Moses said to God, Behold, when I am come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Amen. And what I am, I will be. And what I will be, and he said, You shall say to this, these Israelites, I am has sent me. God, Yahweh, Jesus has sent me. Amen. God has sent me. God is with us. God is leading us. He's telling them in the word of God, he says, this will be a remembrance yes. to them. Yes. Now turn with me, if you will, over to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. In chapter 136. Psalm 136. If you'll allow me to read for a moment, I want to share a couple of things with you. And then I want to tie some things together so that we can understand how we are to be a living memorial Amen. to God. And it says in the Amplified Version, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. Yes. And His yes. mercy endures forever. And His loving kindness endures forever. Oh, give thanks to God of God's. For his mercy and loving kindness endures forever. Amen. The Lord is good. Yes. yes. And his mercy, mercy. endureth forever. Ever. To the Lord of Lords. Yes. For his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. To him who alone does great wonders. For his mercy and his loving kindness endure forever. We can go all the way through chapter number 136, yes. and we understand that it is speaking about the goodness of God yes. and it, the loving kindness of God. Yes. It tells them to give thanks to the Lord. Give yada, give yada, to hold out the hand. Amen. To hold out the hand. When we worship, we Pentecostals, we raise our hands. Amen. We hold out our hands. Yes. This is a sign to God. And it's it not is, our idea. No, it is it's his said. idea. Yes. Lift up holy lift hands. Up. It's a yada to God. We lift up holy hands to revere and to worship him. Yes. Also, as I, I've shared this for years and years, when we were on the evangelistic pill, I would ask people, I would say, if that's you today, I want you to hold up your hand if you're asking Jesus into your heart. Mm -hmm. There is a something about the lifting of a hand. Yes. We know that all over this earth, all over this earth, if somebody were to put a gun up in our back and they would say, all right, put up your hands. <laughs> They've got a gun on you. Yeah. People would raise hands to a person with a gun then should we not lift up our holy hands to God who sent his son? Amen. We Absolutely. are to give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. Lifting up hands is giving thanks to the Lord. Yes. It's, a it's a sign of surrender to God. Hallelujah. But give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He is Tob. He is Tob. He is good. He is pleasant. He is beautiful. He is delightful. He is well attested referring to his practical economical benefits. Now, I'm not just talking yeah. about giving us money. I'm talking about being fruitful. Yes, I'm talking yes. about him giving fruit and grain. Yes. I'm talking about God being our provider. Yes, yes, yes. But it doesn't stop there. He says, it, the Lord is good, but his mercy, his hasid, his kindness... The Lord is kind. The Lord, He gives us loving kindness. Yes. It gives us a kindness that we don't even deserve. Yes. 
but he shows his loving kindness to us. But it also shows his loving kindness to us, and it endures forever. Amen. It endures. It's olam. It is olam. And it means to perpetual, to be never-ending. It is from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. And it's to be a memorial to God. A memorial is a place of remembrance. Amen. It is a place of remembrance. Now, all through the scripture, in the Old Covenant especially, but it speaks that the people of Israel, they are to bring back to remembrance. As my wife was in the book of Hebrews, she didn't know I'm going to be in Hebrews today. But as my wife was in Hebrews today, there was remembrance of what God had done. Amen. There was remembrance. Remember that uh, the Apostle Paul is speaking to the Hebrews. He's speaking to those that have come out of Judaism and they have found Yeshua HaMashiach. They have found Messiah. They have come to the understanding that he has come and given himself so that we can have life and life more abundant. So they do it in remembrance. That's what Passover is. Passover is the remembrance of God bringing them out. Yes. Psalm 136, if you go all the way through it, it is the remembrance of what God has done. It is the remembrance of how God defeated Pharaoh, yes. of how God defeated their enemies, of how God brought them into the land of promise, Amen. into the land of blessing, Amen. into the land of Tob. He brought them into this place. Amen. We serve a God who is a mighty God. We serve a God who is worthy of all of our praise, all of our adoration. Yes. And you may say, oh, but you know, I'm just not a person that, that shows an outward sign like lifting my hands. Well, the Lord says, lift up holy hands. Yes. He tells us to lift up holy hands. Yes. We're to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Yes. We're to declare his greatness until he comes. Yes. But I want to show you several things concerning a living memorial today. Now go to Psalm 135. Go to Psalm 135, if you will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're getting something out of this. We're going somewhere. Amen. Amen. In Psalm number 135, it says uh, in verse number 12, the Lord gave them the land as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, to his people. Your name, O Lord, endures forever. Your fame, O Lord, throughout all the ages. In the, in the King James Version, it puts it this way. The name, thy name, O Lord, endureth forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. Amen. The memorial of who you are. The declaration of who you are. Amen. It endures forever. How does it endure forever? It endures th forever through his people. It endures forever through his children. Israel is the most hated nation on the face of the earth. Well, no, no, I would say Russia or Iran or China is the most hated. No, I can tell you right now, Israel is the most hated place on the planet. Mm. Why? And it is not because of who they are. It is because of whom they belong to. Oh, yes. They belong to Almighty God. Oh, yes. And the world detest whom they belong to. Yeah. But brothers and sisters, you and I, we belong to Almighty God. Yes, we, do. we are of His heritage. Yes, we, are. we are children of the living God. Hallelujah. So we are, we are set forth to declare the praises of Him, yes. to set forth, to declare a memorial of Him in the land of the living. Amen. That is who you and I are. Yes. Yes. We're not called just to go work a job. We're not called just to go make some money so we can pay our bills. 
We're not called to just exist. We are called to be living stones. Amen. We are Amen. called Amen. to be a part of the building. Amen. Come on. Amen. We are the temple of the Most High God. Amen. He dwells within us. We are living stones. Amen. Hallelujah. And he is the chief cornerstone. Yes. And he is the capstone. Yes. The door that holds, the stone that holds it all together. Yes. We are in this world. <coughs> We're strangers. We're aliens. We don't belong here. Yes. My wife, I love the analogy she gave. We are anchored to the mercy seat. Amen. Upward. Upward. We, I use the word tethered uh -huh. because that is a term that we understand to be bound to. So we are tethered yes. with, a, with the chain, the rope of God. Oh, yes. And we are in this world, but not of this That's world. Right. We're walking in this world, yes. strangers and aliens. That's why this world makes no sense to us. Exactly. It makes zero sense to exactly. us. Exactly. And I can tell you at the age of 63, almost 64, but at the age of 63, in the 37 years I've known the Lord, this coming Friday will be 37 years. Hallelujah. And I can tell you this world keeps getting more and more strange Ooh, to me. I've never truth. seen anything like it. Very true. But in the midst of it, we will continue to declare the praises of Almighty. Yes, we will. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you go over to Psalm Hallelujah. 71, go over to Psalm 71. <clears throat> you can write down the verses of 15 through 24. We won't go through all those verses. But in Psalm 71, <clears throat> in beginning in verse number uh, 17, out of the Amplified, Oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Yes. And hitherto I declared your wondrous works. Declaring, be it, I've declared your marvelousness. I've declared a memorial yes. of who you are. Yes. And we know, as we look further, yes, even when I am old and gray-headed, oh God, forsake me not, but keep me alive until I have declared your mighty strength to this generation Amen. and your might and power to all that are to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you what. Our time here on this earth, it's in God's hands. Oh, yes, yes. It's in God's hands. Hallelujah. But while I'm here, I'm going to declare the greatness of God. Absolutely. I'm going to shout it Absolutely. to a generation. I'm going to shout it to the generations Hallelujah. that are yet to come. Yes. Yes. We have technology. We yes. have things now in this life that can reach out to generations if Jesus tarries. Amen. It says further, your righteousness also, O God, is very high, yes. reaching to the heavens. You who have done great things, O yes. God, who is like you yes. or who is your equal. Yes. There is none, O God. There's no one likened unto you in all of heaven or all of earth. You alone are God. You are the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Hallelujah. You are the God of Rocky McClendon. You are the God of Vanjie McClendon. You are the God of celebration. Yes, you we'll shout your praises. We'll be a living memorial. Amen. We'll be a living memorial. The Word of God declares to us. Let me give you some scriptures concerning how we will be this living memorial. Amen. I want you to turn now to the book of Revelation, the book that everyone should read yes. and everyone asks the Holy Ghost to give you understanding. Yes. But in the book of Revelation, in the 12th chapter, now it's talking once the church is gone. The church is already out of here. Okay. But... God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He doesn't change. Amen. If God requires something of his children, if God required something of Abraham, God still requires something of us today. Yes. If God requires something of us today, God will require those that are yet to be his children, those who are yet to find Yeshua HaMashiach. 
And it says here in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, and they overcame him, they overcame the enemy, they overcame Lucifer, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, yes. hallelujah, yes. and by the word of their testimony. Yes. And they love not their own lives even unto death. In other words, God is declaring there, by his blood they overcome the enemy. By his blood we overcome the enemy. But also by the word of our testimony. Amen. By the word of our memorial of who God is in my life. Yes. Of who God is in your life. Now, I'm just going to share a few things with you. But we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We overcome by recognizing His existence. Yes. We overcome by recognizing His existence. But not just His existence, but what He came to do. Yes, yes. What He came to do. We recognize who He is. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. But we must also understand that God has declared from the foundations of the world. What God required of Abraham, God requires of me. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. We're to call things that be not as though they were from the book of Romans. We are to call things that are not as though they were. Abraham's body was yet dead, but God called him father. And he began to call himself father until life came back into his mortal body. He called his wife Sarah. He called her mother. He called her princess until life came back into her mortal body. And Isaac came forth. He came forth. So we must understand if God spoke something to Abraham that God in turn is speaking to us. And if God is speaking to us, then God is speaking to those who are yet to come. So it is a perpetualness. Remember, I shared that with you just a few moments ago. It is perpetual. Yes. It is perpetual. God is perpetual. Yes. He is everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Go to the book of Malachi. The book of Malachi. I want to show you a couple of things here. Well, I tell you what, let's before we go to Malachi, let's go to Hebrews. Okay. Hebrews chapter 7. Let's go there first. Hebrews chapter 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told you Hallelujah. my wife didn't know I was going into Hebrews today. <laughs> I'm just going to read the first couple of words uh, or the first uh, verse of chapter 7 and then I'm going to jump down. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, and priest of the Most High God, met Abraham as he returned from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. So here is Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God, but we know that Melchizedek had no beginning and no end. We know that it was the manifestation of God himself meeting with Abraham. Because Abraham, being obedient, he was meeting with him. When he came and he, he brought and he slaughtered the, the kings and uh, Melchizedek gave blessing to him. Now look here, in, um, it says verse number 3, Without record of father or mother or ancestral line, neither with beginning of days nor ending of life, but resembling the Son of God. Mm -hmm. He continues to be a priest without interpre interpretation and without successor. That, and it says, Now observe and consider how great a personage this was to whom even Abraham the patriarch gave a tenth, the topmost of the pick of the heap of the spoils. And it is true that those descendants of Levi who were charged with the priestly office are committed in the law to take tithes from the people, which means from the brethren, though they have descended from Abraham. But this person who has not their Levitical ancestry received the tithe from Abraham, 
himself blessed him who possessed the promise of God. Yet it is beyond all contradiction that it is the lesser person who is blessed by the greater one. Furthermore, here in the Levitical priesthood, tithes are received by men who are subject to death, while there, there in the case of Melchizedek, there are received by one of whom is testified that he lives perpetually Amen. in our giving to God, in our tithing, in our, you have to tithe before you can give an offering. Yeah, that's first. You have to tithe first. And in tithing, we are declaring that the Lamb of God exists. Absolutely. To us to Him. Yes, the God tithe is. isn't for everybody else's benefit. No. The tithe is for mine and my wife's benefit and our relationship Amen. with God. We are acknowledging He exists. Amen. That is what the Scripture says. Yes. In Malachi, look here. In the book of Malachi, I want you to grab a hold of this because there's a promise. There's promises that come with all the things that God's showing us. Oh, yes. In the book of Malachi, Malachi, remember there's 400 years between Malachi and Matthew. 400 years between, well, not specifically Matthew, yes. but between the coming of the Lord. Yes. Uh, between John the Baptist. Yes. 400 years that God is silent. So if this is so important, God's saying it at the end of this time that he's speaking, and then there's 400 years of silence, guess what? The one, Melchizedek, yeah. Jesus the Messiah, yeah. is getting ready to come on the scene. Yeah. And he says, For what, I am the... Chapter? Chapter number 3, verse number 6. Okay. Please. For I am the Lord. Yes. I cannot change. Yes. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Mm -hmm. so, understand. Therefore, you sons of Jacob, we are sons of Jacob. Yes. We are children of the Most High. We have been grafted into the seed of Abraham. Yes. Even from the days of your father, you're gone away from my ordinances and not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet have we robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. God is declaring, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith. Prove God with it, says the Lord. And if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings on you, that you shall not have, have room enough to receive it. And here's what God was really speaking. And I will rebuke the devourer. Amen. In recognizing God, in recognizing the Lamb, it's not just with our mouths, it's with our actions also. Yeah. In recognizing Him, He says, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to rebuke the devourer away from you. Amen. I will rebuke the devourer away from you for your sake, and it will not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vines cast fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. And also we understand, this is part of a memorial. God says, as you're doing this, he says, I'm doing this. Yes. God says, as you're recognizing me, I'm rebuking the devourer away Amen. from you. Amen. As we're recognizing God, he's the rebuking the devourer away from us. Yes. But we have to understand that this is part, this is the key element here, is recognizing God, not only with our words, but with our deeds towards the Father. And in that, God's rebuking the devourer away from us, but he promises us some things here. Go to Mark chapter number 14. I hope you're getting Amen. something from this. Amen. Because these are the things that we are going to have to teach 
those who are coming behind yes. us. Yes. Because they're going to want to know. Because they've been told all their lives, God doesn't exist. Yeah. They've been told all their lives, oh, that's just a myth. Oh, they've been yeah. told all their lives, oh, well, you know, it's... It's allegory. It's just kind of an allegorical thing. But no, God is God. Yes. He exists. Yes. It's not just a story. No. He is alive. He is well. Yes. Yes. Now in Mark chapter fourteen, Hallelujah. Chapter number fourteen. Let me get there. Amen. Mark chapter number fourteen. The Lord declares in His Word. <clears throat> and surely I tell you, verse number 9, wherever the good news, the gospel is proclaimed in the entire world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Over in the King James, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of, of a memorial of her. Talking about when Mary broke the alabaster jar Amen. over Jesus' feet. Poured out the oil upon his feet. Poured out the oil upon his feet. When we are worshiping him. Yes. When we are bathing him with our tears. When we are bathing him with thanksgiving of what he has done, she knew where God had brought her from. Amen. She knew where Jesus had found her. Amen. We must keep God in remembrance that we know where he found us. Yes, yes. I'm not yes. ashamed. I'm ashamed that I lived that life. In that I am ashamed. I wish I had come to him earlier in my life and served him. But I'm not ashamed of where he found me. Amen. Because he hunted me out. Amen. And every person on this planet, he is hunting you out. Yes. He is after you. He's trying yes. to find you. Yes. He, he, does, he knows where you are. Yes. You're trying to find him. And right. He's saying, I'm right here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's right there with he's you. He's right reaching there. out to you. Amen. But we're not reaching up to him. He says, this will be a memorial. Yes. What we do unto the Lord. How we recognize who he is in our lives yeah. is a memorial. She did. She did something publicly, but she was doing it unto the Lord because all the disciples were seeing it. They were going nuts because this woman is pouring out money on his feet, pouring out burial ointments on his feet. Amen. But no one realized that she was proclaiming his death and resurrection. We're to declare his birth, yes. his death, his resurrection. We're to declare what he did for us. Amen. Her tears were her recognition of what he did for her. Yes. Come further. Let me give you a couple of more things here. Go to the book of Acts. The book of Acts. The book of Acts. The 10th chapter. I love my... Oh, I love, I love the book of Acts 10th chapter. Amen. Ooh, in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. <clears throat> Amen. Let me read this. It says, Now living in Caesarea, there was a man whose name was Cornelius, a centurion, a captain, a Roman soldier a commander of lead of Roman soldiers, of what was known as the Italian regiment. He wasn't just any soldier. He was an of, of the elite group, the Italian regiment. A devout man who venerated God and treated him with reverential obedience. This man 
denied not his life to death. This man was openly, people knew who this man was. They knew that he loved the Lord. That was putting his life on the line because he was to have no other God than Caesar. And it says, he had reverential obedience as he did all his household. And he gave much alms to the people and prayed continually to God. He prayed continually to God. Now, I want to show you something here in verse number four. And he gazing intently at him became frightened and said, well, excuse me, about the verse three and about the ninth hour, about 3 p.m. of the day, he saw clearly a vision, an angel of God entering and saying to him, Cornelius. And he gazed intently at him because frightened and said, what is it, Lord? And the angel said to him, your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor. Yeah. So first of all, we recognize God yeah. in the tithe. Yeah. And then we can give alms, alms to help people, yes. to help those in need, mm -hmm. to help those that don't yet know Jesus. Yes. And it says, your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God and have been remembered by him. The King James says, thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial to God. A memorial to God. Reaching out and helping. Reaching out and giving. The church, we give so that the kingdom can be can be uh, declared. We, we give to help people in Israel. We feed the hungry in Israel. Amen. We're declaring the gospel to the people of Israel. Amen. We're reaching out locally here to Berk, uh, United Christian Ministries. Amen. We're reaching there. We're reaching into Africa and other places sharing the gospel. Amen. We're doing things in our area to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to reach those that are in need. We are to do these things. We are to keep these things as remembrance before God. Amen. God, is, as we're reaching out to this community, as we're helping those that have need, Lord Jesus, I ask you if you would, please, save souls, Lord. Amen. We're calling souls to your kingdom. Amen. We're bringing him to remembrance of who he is and what he's done. Now go to Romans chapter 10. I'm finishing up. And in closing, Amen. Romans chapter number 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also remember, and this is the beginning of it all, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouths the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God's raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. The confession of our mouths. Yes. Each and every day, all day long. Yes. Whether it be to God. Remember, Paul said, I pray without ceasing. Paul recognized whether he was speaking with man or just speaking with the Lord. Even when he was speaking with man, he was speaking to God. Yes. He was declaring to the Lord. So we must remember that everything we do, we are declaring to the Lord in word and deed. We are declaring to God. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you getting anything out of this? Amen. 1 Peter chapter number 3. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse number 15. I'm sharing scriptures with you that you know. You know these passages. Let's see. You're in John? Nope. You're in John. Oh, I'm in John. No You're wonder it wasn't making sense. Whoa, help You're me, Jesus. Go to John. First, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> I, baby, I got to get these glasses checked. I know. I know. <laughs> Y'all forgive me. Baby, you got first, but let's see here. Anyway, in other words, we're to make a defense of the beliefs that you have. 
There you go. Always be ready to give a defense. Amen. To give a defense Amen. of who Jesus is and what he's done in your life. Amen. Second Timothy 1 and 8, it says, Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it's the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. We're, we're to constantly, constantly be declaring. Let me tell you what, we're living in a world, we're living in a world that's trying to tear down memorials, trying to tear down declarations of who we are yeah. as a nation. We are not a perfect nation. We are imperfect. We are sinners yeah. saved by grace. Yeah. But we have declared that we're going to live by a standard, the word of God in our nation. Amen. And the word of God is under attack. The word of God is trying to be torn down each and every day. Yeah. And we must be ready to give an account. But let me tell you, your testimony, your memorial of who God is to you, that is how God has revealed himself to you. That cannot be torn down. Amen. I know where Jesus Christ found me. I know He where he found me. Amen. He found me at the end of a drug addiction. He found me as an alcoholic. He found me lost in my sins. That's where he found me. But the God, Jesus the Messiah, who came to this earth, he bore my sins Amen. upon himself. He took my sicknesses and my diseases upon himself. Yes. He loves us. He loves us in spite of us. Yes. Yes. Amen. All of us have sinned and come short of God's glory. We don't deserve him. Everyone on this planet, we don't deserve him. But he made the way for us. Amen. Don't forget where you've come from. You say, but I, I'm ashamed of it. Yeah, be ashamed of the sin, but don't be ashamed of what he did for you. Amen. That's the scheme of the enemy, to get you to close your mouth and be ashamed of what he did for you because somebody will see a side of you Amen. that you don't want anyone to see. In fact, he even removes the shame. Yeah. You don't even have to be attached That's to the That's the scheme shame. of the enemy. That is the scheme of the enemy. It's all. He, if the Lord chooses, and according to his word, he chooses to remove your sin as, as far, far as, as the, the east, east is, is from, from, the, from west, the west, then we shouldn't even, even let shame of what That's we've right. asked the Lord to forgive us of. He doesn't want us connected to it in any way. That's right. Way. What would have happened? He wants you to move if forward. Peter, if Peter had accepted shame and just been locked in that shame. It kept him on the right path that he's like, hey, I'm not going back. He I, didn't forget. Yeah, you don't forget that. But on that day of Pentecost, like, all of a sudden this fisherman that denied knowing yeah. Jesus three times, and Jesus told him, you're going to deny knowing me three times before the cock crows. Yeah. That same Peter stood up and said, These men are not drunk as you suppose. Wow. This is that spoken by the prophet Joel. That's right. This is that. Amen. Brothers and sisters, he loves us with an everlasting love. Yes. You're watching this service today, someone out there, and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. I know my wife has given an opportunity to receive the Lord earlier. But right now, he says, if you'll confess him with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You'll be born again. So we're going to pray. You may be out there and say, Pastor, I've been separated from the Lord. And it's time for me to return back to the Father. Amen. Right now we're going to do that. Pray with us. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I know you're the Son of God. I know you're the Son of God. I know you came to this earth. I know you came to this To earth die for my sin. To die for my sin. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. That you took. That you took. My sin. 
my sin upon yourself. Upon yourself. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. That you took my punishment. That you took my punishment upon yourself. Upon yourself. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. In my place. In my place. And you were buried. And you were buried. And on the third day. And on the third day. You rose from the dead. You rose from the dead. And right now. Right now. You're seated at the right hand of God. You're seated at the right hand of God. And I thank you. I thank you. That you have forgiven me. That you've forgiven me. I thank you. I thank you. That you've given me new life. That you've given me new life. And from this day forward. And from this day forward. I am free from my past. I am free from my past. And I thank you. And I thank you. I walk in newness of life. I walk in newness of life. And life more abundant and in you. And life more abundant in you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If that was your first time to ever pray that prayer, you have just had your second birthday. You say my second birthday? Yes. We are born into this world once of That's the right. flesh. But what you just did is spoken of in the Bible as a spiritual rebirth. It's what was spoken to Nicodemus when he was like, how, how am I going to go back into my mother's, mother's womb? Because again. Jesus told him he needed to be born again. And he's like, born again, how's that going to happen? This is a spiritual birth. So it's like today, you can mark this date down. As my husband told you, he is marking next Friday down. He has always shared with us that February 26th, from 1984 mm -hmm. is his spiritual birthday, meaning that's the day he prayed that prayer for the first time. And if you've prayed it for the first time today, you should write this date down and say, this is my spiritual birthday. I will always know that it was on Amen. this day. I gave my life to the Lord. And just as we've been sharing, uh, the Lord has hope for you. He yes, wants he you to walk in hope. Part of that hope you're going to find as you start on this journey with the Lord comes through reading His Word. If you don't have a Bible, we want to get a Bible to you. Yes. If you would please just reach out to us here on our Facebook page, we would be happy to get a Bible to you. If you don't have one, please let us know because that is going to help you so much as you have started your journey with the Lord. Also being part of our discipleship classes with Larry and Christina Foy right here on our Facebook yes. page. In fact, all of our classes. Each class will help you to grow in a beautiful way in the Lord as you just are learning more about Him, learning more about His ways, learning more of what He has for you and then what you have for Him. Amen. We have things that we are to do for him. That's right. There are, there are, he is, we're, we're on this earth for a season. And while we're here, we have to be about our father's business, right. meaning our heavenly father's business, the Amen. things that he would have us to do. Amen. So happy birthday to those of you that this is the first day you have Amen. ever asked happy the Lord birthday. Jesus into your life. Amen. Also, this time, we if you need to go to the kitchen and get some crackers or bread, get some juice or water, we take this time during our service each Sunday to honor the Lord in what is called communion. If you've never <coughs> heard of communion, it is where we get some bread, crackers, juice, water, whatever it is you have. But the bread is representing the body of Christ, what he did for us when he went to the cross, yes. when he died on the cross, when he shed his blood on the cross. The, the, the juice, the water is representative of the blood. And yes. we celebrate the blood of Jesus, the powerful blood. The shedding of his blood is what has, when we just talked about how he is able to remove our sin as far as the east is from mm -hmm. the west, it's because he shed his blood. That's right. He took stripes on his back on his for back. your healing, for my yes. healing. If you're going through any sickness, Please, even as we take communion, we believe, we're believing the God, God to just allow his healing power to flow in Amen. your body. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul, he wrote to the church at Corinth, and he told him, he said, on the night that the Lord was betrayed, Jesus took bread Amen. and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Yes. As often as you eat of it, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. So, Father, right now we come before you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your broken body. Amen. As we partake of this communion together, we thank you that this bread is representative of you Amen. and what you did for us. We thank you that you bore our sins, our iniquities, and our chastisement upon yourself. 
and it's by your stripes we're healed. Amen. So, Lord, we partake of this bread, doing it in remembrance of you. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And in the same manner, the Lord Jesus, he lifted up the cup. And he said, this cup, it's a new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the new covenant we have in your precious blood. Because what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice for us mm -hmm. and for your making us whole. In Jesus' in name, Jesus name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank mm. you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. We love you. Thank Hallelujah. you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank You're you, healing Lord Jesus. eyes today. Yes. You're healing vision today, mm. Lord God. You're healing spiritual vision and physical vision. Father God, things that <coughs> have just been... Uh, fuzzy, foggy looking, even spiritually. I thank you, Lord, that that fog is lifting. Yes. That fog is lifting and things mm. are going to become very clear to you yes, Lord. of what God is doing. Mm -hmm. You're going to see even, even concerning the timetable of things, you're going to see, okay, God, I see now. I see now what this was all mm. about. What you may have felt was time wasted, you're going to be able to see was invaluable. Invaluable time. Yes. And even physically, any, any that are battling with their, their eyes, we're thanking God for a touch. Yes, A Lord. touch in your physical eyes mm -hmm. this very day. Yes. Ears. Ringing yes. in the ears. Healed of the Lord. Yes. Healed. The blood yes. of Jesus yes. is here today healing mm. ears. Yes, Lord. We're talking your physical ears ringing. Yes. Any distortion in sound in your ears. We're pleading the blood of Jesus yes. and thanking God for his healing yes. power flowing. Yes, Lord. In the name yes. of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Thank you. Sinuses are being open, Lord. We Amen. thank you. Amen. Ooh, we thank you. Amen. Stomach viruses, yes. you're healed now in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you. You're dr you're driving this pandemic. You're Amen. driving it away from this earth. Even the report that came yes. this week, may it continue to yes. flow like a rock till oh, it flat like a rock line. until there's nothing. Completely gone. In the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. And Father, in the name of Jesus. It just will astound hallelujah. even the scientists. May it be yes. an astounding thing, most especially for them, that oh my goodness, how did this happen? Yes. The power of God has come in and done Yes. Beyond, above and beyond Yes. what could just be done in the physical. We thank you, Lord Thank God. you, Lord. We thank you for thank it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> we thank you, Lord, that you're building stronger and stronger those memorials Hallelujah. of who you are. And what you've done in our lives. Yes. And Father God, as 
We're preparing and looking forward in the future and getting back together. Yes. Father God, I oh, thank you. Thank you Lord. We will be shouting oh, yes. the greatness of our God from Absolutely. the housetops. Thank you, Jesus. We'll be shouting it out on the streets. Hallelujah. We'll be shouting it everywhere we go, Lord. Hallelujah. Declaring how great our God is. How great our God is. No one will wonder who we serve. Yes. Because we're going to declare it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you inhabit the praises, the praises of, your people. of your people. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Amen. Father, I know this week that Mita and Patsy both had birthdays. And, Father, Amen. I pray your blessings you. on Mita and Patsy. Yes. We gonna, pray. Yes. We're praying over y'all. We're going to sing to you. Ellie. Amen. But... Father, we pray for, we pray for Mina for, and Patsy thank right you, now. God bless Lord Jesus, them, their birthdays, these precious Lord women of God. Hallelujah. We pray your blessings upon their lives, far beyond even what they've already experienced. Amen. We pray greater manifold blessings. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Overtake them. Hallelujah. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name. We're Amen. We pray for our tithes and offerings. Yes. We're going to sing, but we will. Okay. I pray for our tithes and yes. offerings. Let's pray over our tithes and offerings, hey, and then we'll you, sing Lord. happy birthday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Father, Father we thank you that as we lift up our thank tithes you, and Jesus. offerings to you, yes. the Father God, we thank you for the gift that you've given us, salvation yes. through your Son, the Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you've broken the curse of the law of sin and death. Yes, God. We thank you that you've made us once again in right relationship with our Heavenly Father. We thank you that we can cry, Abba, Father. We thank you that you've made us join heirs in your inheritance. And the nations of this earth belong to you. And right now, gathered around your throne, men, women, and children from every Hallelujah. nation, tongue, tribe, and kindred. And they're worshiping you in spirit and truth. And if that's what heaven looks and sounds like, that's what we, the church, we at Celebration, we Hallelujah. will look and sound like heaven. Hallelujah. And Lord Jesus, we call the, the nations from the north, south, east, east and, and west, west. And those with glad and sincere hearts. Yes. They're coming to the Lord. Hallelujah. And they're going to serve you. And we're going to grow together yes, we in are, the things Father of God. your kingdom. Hallelujah. And we will shout your praises yes. to the ends of the earth Amen. until you come. Yes. And Father God, we're believing for that third great outpouring. Oh, yes. That outpouring of the Holy Ghost yes. upon this earth. Hallelujah. And Lord Jesus... We pray yes. that it pours out yes. upon every man, woman, and child on this planet. Hallelujah. And Lord, we pray for those in authority over us. Oh, we yes. pray for the president, yes. vice president, Amen. Congress, cabinet, the yes. Supreme Court. Yes. We pray for all those in state government. Yes, we pray for our local governments. Them and their households Hallelujah. be saved. Hallelujah. We pray they be baptized in the Holy the Ghost. Holy the Word of God be poured out upon them, yes. Lord. And it be a lamp unto their feet and, and a light unto, unto their path. path. And Lord Jesus, we all will walk a highway of Hallelujah. holiness. We don't want to just hear the word in celebration. We're going to act on it. Amen. We're going to reap the harvest of it. We give its given good measure, pressed down, Hallelujah. shaken together, running over. over. We we put our tithes into the kingdom. We sow it into the kingdom. Hallelujah. We pay our offerings, Lord Jesus, as well. Amen. And Lord, we thank you, us and our households, born again. Born again. Us and our households, baptized in the Holy Ghost. Us and our households, yes. Lord, sickness, disease, driven from every household. Amen. We thank you for shalom. Amen. And we cry souls, souls, souls soul, soul, to the soul, kingdom soul. of God. In the amen. name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 amen, amen. Hallelujah. Again, happy birthday, Mita and Patsy. Mita, I just love what you're sharing right here. Mita has written that I was told around the Sea of Galilee that there are holes drilled into the rocks, and their idea of an anchor is much different than what we think of. They had pegs tied to ropes. They would put the pegs into the holes in rock, and it would have been up. And the rock would represent Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once again, just that confirmation that our anchor is upward. Amen. We are anchored upward. Amen. But happy birthday to you, Mita. Happy birthday, Patsy. We'll just sing. Do you want to start or you want me to start? You start.
start it. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. We love y'all. We love y'all so, so much. God bless you. So much. We want to You want to read share Psalm 91? Psalm 91. We can also pray that over you. Absolutely. Pray as we've been praying it every week and just lifting it up as a prayer unto the Lord. Amen. Uh, just as we are keeping the bloodline. We've been yes. talking about the blood of Jesus here. Bloodline over our household. Talking and, and communion, taking communion. Yes. And yes, keeping a bloodline around our homes, around our businesses, uh, around everything yes, that concerns Yes, amen. It us. all belongs amen. to him. Amen. So when you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. Yes. He is the hope. Hope. <laughs> he is the hope. That holds me. That holds me. Amen. And the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap yes. of the enemy. And he will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing. Right. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you, nor will the powers of evil be launched against you. Even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed, you will remain right. Amen. unscathed, unharmed, and you will be a spectator Hallelujah. as the wicked perish in judgment. For they will be paid back for what they've done. When we live our lives within the shadow of God Most High, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. How then could evil prevail against us or disease infect us? God sends angels yes. with special orders to protect you wherever you go, defending you from all harm. If you walk into a trap, they'll be there for you and keep you from stumbling. You'll even walk unharmed among the fiercest powers of darkness, trampling every one of them beneath your feet. For here is what the Lord has spoken to me. Because you have delighted in me as my great lover, I will greatly protect you. I will set you in a high place, safe and secure before my yes. face. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. And you will find and feel my presence, even in your time of pressure and trouble. Yes. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast. You will be satisfied with a full life and with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness Amen. of my Amen. salvation. Pam, we're lifting up Bob LeFevre. It just yes. came up while my wife, wife oh, was yes. reading Psalm 91. Okay. And we're going to pray for the broken Amen. hip. Come yes, against God. that spot on his lung. In the name of Jesus, and the pneumonia, pneumonia must be gone. Father, right now we lift up Bob LeFevre to you and we Bob. pray, Lord Jesus. Healing yes. in his body. Hallelujah. That broken hip be healed in the, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Be knit no back together. Spot on his lungs. lungs. Be gone in the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Pneumonia be dried up Amen. and out of his body in the, the name of Jesus. The we thank you, Lord, from the crown of his head to the soles so of his feet. feet. He is the healed, healed of, the of the Lord. We declare it done. Yes. Wholeness in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <coughs> Hallelujah. We want to speak a blessing over yes. you. Yes. You are the blessed of the yes, Lord. Yes, you are. We pray the Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face to, to shine, shine upon you. you. He'll lift up his countenance upon you. Yes. And he'll give you peace both now and, and forever. Ever. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the country. Everything you put your hands to is blessed. blessed. Your barns are blessed. Fields are blessed. Needing boards are blessed. Blessed when you rise up. Amen. Blessed, blessed when, when you, you lie, lie down. down. You're the head. You're not, you're the, not tail. the tail. You're on top. You're not on the bottom. Amen. You're the redeemed you of the Lord. The and the redeemed of the Lord, of the Lord shouted, Amen. Amen. Amen! God bless you. We love you. We love you. God bless <laughs> God you, Lord bless you all. Tammy. Love y'all so much. Jessica. Pray blessings over y'all's week. Yes. Hallelujah. Very, very, Lord, very. give you souls to the kingdom. Oh, Amen. Yes. Divine appointments. Yes, we divine look forward appointments. To hearing 
all the good reports yes, of what we God do. is doing. Hugs to everybody. Hugs to you all. God, God bless, bless you. you. God Mary. bless you. God bless you, Sunil. Omar, God bless you. Good to you. see you, Omar. God bless you. So good to we see you We love all. you all. God bless. Have a super blessed week.